In the late 60s, a very clever fellow whose name I should remember but don't invented a way to beat the game of blackjack using the best computers that were available to him at the time. The method he came up with was called card counting. Technically, it was not the same as card counting in the game of bridge, for example, um, but it did work. What it, what it involved was keeping a running count, having assigned preset values to cards in the deck. High cards would be, um, a, a, I think it was a plus one, and low cards a minus one, and then seven eights and nines, sometimes fives and sixes, um, would get a zero value, I think, was how it worked. It's been a long time since I looked this over. But, uh, and it may have been the other way around, too. It may have been a minus one for the high cards and plus one for the low cards. And I don't remember. But that's what it did. And there, it got a lot of refinements along the way over the next decade or so, a lot of finer gradations, so that there were actually different values for each card. Uh, in some systems for people who could uh, exercise that much memory. But anyway, by keeping a running count, i.e. doing plus one, minus one, plus one, minus one, at any given time you would either have a positive or a negative value as you were playing blackjack. What was discovered was if you have a standard bet of say ten dollars per hand when the, when the count was minus, you would drop that to five dollars, and when the count was plus, you would raise it to fifteen dollars. By doing this consistently, you would consistently win. And it worked. And I oversimplify, but it worked. Uh, and of course the casinos got very upset by all this. They, uh, they banned card counting, they called it cheating. In Las Vegas they were upheld, in Atlantic City they were not. Um, but eventually what they did was to figure out a way to beat the card counters. Now the card counting method, keeping track of that plus minus, was absolutely dependent on the deck being random. If the deck wasn't random, then it threw the whole thing off. And that's how the house beat the card counters. They took, uh, I mean, they tried a lot of things, including going to multiple decks, like a stack of eight decks, like this. And that didn't work. You could still card count into wins using this many decks. What they did was they used the fact that from the factory, a, new, a newly opened box of cards looks like this. It's, uh, it goes from highest to lowest and separated by suit. Okay? If you ever go to a blackjack table in a casino, you'll see them do a very stylized shuffle, which I can't possibly do. I'm not a trained blackjack dealer. But it's something like they, they split the deck in half, and then they split it in half again, and then they take individual decks, and they always start out with, with new decks. In other words, it's, it's, it's suited like, it's arranged like this. They never, they never go with decks that have been played with, or, at, or if they do use decks that have been played with, they've rearranged them to look like this, right? So they, then they go to, to the individual decks, and they give it one shuffle. Okay, and they do it again. They give it one shuffle. And they do that a few times. You know, it's it's a very it's a very ritualized thing. If you sit there and watch them, it's fascinating. But the end result is that what you get is not anything that could be considered as a random shuffle. And unfortunately for the blackjack players, this worked great. Um, so if you 
get yourself uh, tricked into buying one of these books that you'll find in uh, the casino shops or uh, in cities, in bookshops in cities where there are casinos about how to beat blackjack. You're really out of luck. <laughs> but here's the thing. It's an eloquent proof that there is random because the algorithm that was used to develop the winning method depended on the deck being random. And as long as the deck was random, it worked. As soon as the deck wasn't random, it no longer worked. Ta-da! Obviously there is such a thing as random. And that is my main point here. Um, a lot of people are using the word random to mean a causal. Okay? I don't see that it means that. Random just means that amongst the possibilities, each is equally likely. I don't see that it means any more than that. Okay, if I, if I take a deck of cards and I shuffle it, where am I violating causality? In what sense am I violating causality? No, I'm not. I'm just shuffling the cards. But, at this point, the odds of any card being at any point in the deck is equal. It's one chance in 52 that any card will be this one. Okay. I had no idea that was going to be the king of clubs. No, no idea. So, I think, I'm not sure what people are thinking, actually. I don't, I don't want to ascribe thoughts to other people. Too many people do that. Too many people will sit here and tell you what the other guy thinks. I don't like to do that. What I'm going to say is, perhaps, there's a misunderstanding of the whole concept of causality going around. Anyway,